In today's video, I'm gonna show you my best lens recommendations for the Mivo Core. This is an interchangeable lens camera, and I've seen a lot of people actually asking which lens is the right lens for this camera. I know a lot of people been using the previous Mivo cameras that didn't need really any extra lens because they got the built-in lens already. But with this new camera, it's great, bigger sensor, micro filtered sensor. It comes with a challenge, which is which lens actually should I buy with this camera? In today's video, because I'm a big micro filtered user, you know, before the Mivo Go, I got this GH5, I've got GX85, and they use the same micro filtered mount. So I've got a lot of lenses, and I believe I am in a very, very good position to talk about micro filtered lenses. That's why, hopefully, I'm gonna be able to help you pick the right lens for your Mivo Core camera. So let's go. What is going on guys? My name is Sam, you're watching my production tips and tools. So let's talk lenses. When it comes to choosing the right lens for the camera, there's no magic lens. You need to pick the right lens for the job that you're actually doing. That's the first thing you have to consider. That's why what I'm going to say here is going to depend on your use case scenario. Some people will buy the Mivoco for streaming sports. Some people will buy it probably for streaming podcasts and recording YouTube videos. Although personally, I recommend the camera if you are into streaming some sort of wireless mobile streamings first, and then you can still use this camera. It's actually feature packed. You can use it in a studio. You can use it in anything. But however, this camera shines really if you compare it to other cameras like the GH5 or G85 or any other micro folded camera in the same pricing range. The only thing that actually stands out for this camera is the fact that you can actually use it for mobile and wireless live streaming. So that's really the best use case scenarios for the camera. Now let's start. The first thing, if you're buying just one camera, the Mivo Core, if you are going to get the Mivo Core right now, just one single camera. The number one lens that I would actually recommend would be the lens that you're watching right now, which is the 14 to 42 mm lens f. 3.5 to something i believe one is a super super small zoom lens which is great because it's gonna keep the whole setup like weight two it's got a good zoom range which is 14 to 42 again this is what i'm using right now i'm not zoomed in all the way now i'm like around 17 mm and another good thing about it is it's gonna give you a nice super blurry background but you can see my background is it's kind of blurry which is good and it's got power zoom and the pricing is not really that expensive it's got pretty well priced again another good advantage of micro filtered lenses is the fact that they're not really expensive compared to full frame lenses and stuff like that that's a good thing that you're going to benefit from using micro filtered mount 14 to 42 that's my number one recommended lens for everything doesn't matter either recording content for youtube either you're doing sports if you got money for only one lens this is the lens i would actually recommend you got the wide kind of angle covered in fact let me actually go ahead and open the application so i can show you guys what you get with this lens just to give you an example so right now i am if i go to lens control i go to zoom so right now i'm zoomed in at around 16. now i can go to 14. this is like a super wide angle again I can see I lose focus. I can zoom all the way in. This is 42. It's out of focus. The point is, if you want really like if I was doing maybe sports outdoors and I wanted like to get a super zoomed in angle, then I will try something like this. As you can see, the range is really, really good. I'm going to go back to 16 because that's my focal length that I'm using right now and boom for me creating content in here is perfect it's giving me a little bit of bokeh in the background it's not super wild but as you can see it's awesome so that's my first lens next lens we have here is gonna be that i actually recommend it's gonna be prime lens mostly if you're doing recording podcasts if you're doing things like youtube videos and sometimes you're gonna take it outside of course this is the sigma 16 mm f 1.4 this is what it looks like 
This is the lens that I usually personally use on my YouTube videos. If you watch my channel, the lens that I use all the time with my Panasonic GH5. This is a lens that is very common among content creators. Some people use it. You have the same version on Sony cameras like APS-C sensor cameras like the Sony ZV-E10, that kind of mount. So this is a good lens to give you while you're watching right now, but it's going to give you a better bokeh and it's going to let in more light because the aperture goes up to 1.4. It's f1.4. That means more blurry background, more light coming into the sensor and therefore you're going to get a better image, less noise however you're not gonna be able to zoom that's why i don't recommend it to be number one it's got no zoom if you want to zoom you're just gonna get closer to the person to the subject if you want to zoom out you're gonna move backwards away from the subject that's how it works but if you're recording again podcast content on the go where you have control to just set up the cameras this is gonna be a perfect lens for that so this is my second recommendation apart from the first one which is i'll consider it the kit lens for focusing you're gonna be able to focus no problem with the lens the app can control the lens because it's electronic it's not manual and you should be able to do everything no problem now my lens number three is actually another zoom lens this is from Leica it's made by Lumix this is a 12 to 60 this is a zoom lens the reason why I made it number three is because if you wanted to zoom you cannot control the zoom using the application like the way we were doing with the 14 to 42 mm lens because the zooming is not power zoom so you're gonna have to zoom manually that's why i didn't recommend it to be number one but however it's gonna give you a wider range so this is 12 to 60 which is awesome but on the top of that, you also have power OIS, which is uh, optical image stabilization, which is awesome if you want to do handheld. Probably most people using this camera are not going to be doing handheld, but if you have to do it, then you have it. So which means it's going to give you more light compared to the 14 to 42. And that's why I recommend it to number three. Why? Because one, you're not going to be able to control the zoom using the camera. And two, it may be a little more expensive. I believe it's around 600, 700 compared to the first kit lens that I showed you guys. But other than that, this is going to be a great lens for mostly content creation, sports, anything. Because it's got a wide range of zoom. So from 12 to 60, 60 is really good. It's like 120 mm equivalent to full frame, which is awesome. My lens number four is going to be another prime lens. And this is a super super lovely lens super small and it's called the lumix 25 mm f 1.4 now there's a f 1.7 version of it which you can actually try but the reason why i love this one the one f 1.4 version is because first of all it's super super lightweight as you can see super super small and if i attach it to the mivo core as you can see the setup is gonna be really small and that's the goal when you're having this kind of cameras you don't want it to be super heavy so this is what it looks like this is gonna give you a really really good bokeh as well because it's f 1.4 two it's not expensive three again it's a prime lens so you can control the focus with the application but you cannot zoom so it's 25 mm and it's gonna give you like a happy medium kind of look so if i was to do like if i was doing like just youtube videos maybe i had two cameras i would do like if i was a content creator maybe doing like podcast my happy dream lens combo would be the 25 on one camera and then the other would be the 16 mm why because they both have 25 mm f 1.4 maximum aperture and then we have the 16 as well 16 mm f 1.4 maximum aperture so these two lenses are going to be able to actually match well and one is going to give you a more like a tighter angle and the other one is going to be a wider angle kind of look and the lighting is going to match the bokeh is going to match and everything and this is like a super super wild combo for creating content in a controlled environment like a studio podcast and stuff like that or streaming from studio any place where you are in a city the setup you don't need a super zoomed in stuff if you're doing sports you want to go with this kind of zoom lenses more because you need that range people are moving so depending on where you position your camera you need the power zoom and you need to be zooming in and out so that's why power zoom lenses come in 
another kit lens that may come depending on the kit that you get with the Mivoco, which is the 45 to 175 mm lens from Lumix as well. And this is f4 to f5.6. In terms of light, all these kit lenses are not going to perform super well in low light because the aperture is a little higher. However, if you're doing outdoors, even like in a studio like this one where I have like I can control my lighting, they still work well, no problem because that one is around f3.6 or 3.7. And as you can see, the image is really, really good because I have good lighting. So that's the key have a good lighting so this lens i cannot use it in the studio if you're doing some sort of podcast studio work it's not gonna work however if you're doing sports this is gonna be perfect because 175 times 2 that's 350 mm equivalent of a full frame lens so that's like a super super zoomed in look this is gonna be super super useful if you're doing sports baseball games and stuff like that for your kids or for your whoever i think getting this zoom lens if you're getting let's say two cameras if it were you i get this one a 45 to 175 and i'll get the other kit lens the number one which is 14 to 42 mm and i'll combine those two lenses because the good thing is this one is actually power zoom which means i can control the zoom through the mivo multicam application which is awesome this is my number five the reason why it's on number five is because it can be used mostly in studios because it's super super tight unless you have a big space if you're youtuber like me my room is not super huge so when i put it on the camera you can just see my eyes because super super zoomed in so you can just see my eyes or maybe my nose that's it if you are in a place doing sports obviously outdoors this is gonna be super useful again the fact that it's power zoom is also awesome so lens number six is gonna be using manual lenses now i have this vintage lens from canon this is an old lens it's 100% manual and i have this plastic adapter so i'm not gonna be able to zoom it's not a zoom lens it's a prime lens this is not a lens that i recommend if you have it i just want to let you know that you can use it and it has an adapter that i can just go ahead and attach to the mivo core and then what's gonna happen is i can just control the aperture with the lens if i need to zoom again this is not a zoom lens this is just a prime lens but i can control the uh, focusing for focusing i have to use the lens ring again i can't use the application to focus but it's gonna work as well it's just gonna have to control everything manually the recommendation number seven is use some adapters this is the meta bones now the meta bones is supposed to work but i tested on the amount of the camera that i have actually couldn't fit so i don't know if it's a problem with the camera or if the mivo doesn't support the meta bones the way it was made i have no idea because it fits on my gh5 however on the mivo website they actually say that they are going to support these adapters i just tested it it doesn't work so i'm gonna reach out to logitech to know what's going on i don't have the veal trucks probably the veal trucks is gonna be able to fit and again most people use the veal trucks back in the day i was not smart so i bought the most expensive one which is mainly for full frame lenses so this allows me to use any canon ef mount lens it could be manual it could be electronically controlled lens any ef mount canon lens so if this was supported you would be able to add any canon lens like 70 to 200 like all the juicy cool looking lenses for your sports or anything that you want so again for now this is not working if you were thinking about the meta bones this is the meta bones ef2 micro four third mount speed booster xl 0.64 x that one again it's not working right now physically it's not attaching to the camera however i don't know what's gonna happen in the future because logitech said that they are going to be working on supporting these ones the meta bones or wheel trucks probably maybe they're gonna do the wheel trucks instead of meta bones i don't know yet so far this is not working it's not supported for now but I believe you got most of what I had to recommend depending on the use case scenarios. Again, this is a super, super cool camera and just getting the lenses will not be enough. That's why in my next video, I'm going to show you how to actually take those lenses, attach them to the camera and be able to control the camera using the Mivo app, which is a free application that works with the camera. Be able to control your lens, adjust the focus and get all the settings right, your exposure to make sure you get the best picture out of it and the video is gonna be linked right here so make sure you check it out and i'll see you there guys take care